Hello there, in this episode of To The Point Code, we will look at how to set up Google Sign In in our application. This is the fifth part of our Expo React Native Login System series. So let's get started. We will implement this using the Google Sign In button that we have on our login page. So let's create a handler for this. So how this will work is that when we trigger the handle Google Sign In function, the user will be redirected to a page to log in with the email address. Once the user logs in with the email address, the details of the user will be made accessible to us for using our code. So from there, we can decide whatever to do with the details, whether to store it in our database or just use it temporarily in our application. Now to continue, we need to install a package from Expo. So let's visit the documentation. So now we copy the command and head to the command line to install it. We are installing Expo Google App Auth. Once the package has installed successfully, we need to create a config object. This object will contain the client IDs of all the platforms that you want to run our application on. That is, if you want to run your application on iOS and Android, you need to get client IDs for Android and also iOS. So to get these IDs, we need to visit the Google Console and create our application. So on the documentation page, you will get the link to the Google Console. I'm duplicating the tab so that we keep the documentation page. So once we are on the page, we need to make sure that we have logged in. After we have logged in, we need to create a project. For this one, I will call my project Flower Crib. I will leave the organization as blank. If you have multiple projects, you have to ensure that you have selected the correct project. Now the first thing to do is to configure the consent screen. So we will do that. For the user type, we will choose external because that's the only option you can actually choose. Then we will click on create. Now for the app information, we will put in details about our app. For the name, I'll put flower crib again. And for the email, you put your email there. If you have a logo for your app, you can upload it here. Also, if you have an app domain, you can add it. But for now, I'll leave everything else blank. For the developer's contact information, you can once again put your email address here. Once you've done that, you can save and continue. You can also skip this part. Now over here, you can add some users who will be testing the application. If you leave it blank, you will still be able to access your application. So for now, I will leave it blank. Now you are presented with a summary and you can either edit or go back to your dashboard. Now we we'll click on credentials. Once you're on the credentials page, we click create credentials and we choose OAuth client ID. Now for the application type, we'll be creating for both iOS and Android. So let's create for the iOS first. Now for here, you can decide to edit the name of the application. Now for the bundle ID, let's visit the documentation for the details. From the documentation, we see that we have to copy this for the bundle ID. If you have any other details about the application, you can add them here. Otherwise, we click on create. And we see that OAuth client has been created. And now you are presented with your client ID. So all you have to do is to copy. 
and go back to your code editor. Back in the code editor, you add this to the config object and this will be iOS client ID. And I'll wrap this in the back text which is the same as the code. Now back on the credentials page, we can go ahead to create the credentials for the Android. So for the application type, we choose Android. And we do the same thing as we did for the iOS. For the package name, we go back to the documentation. Now we need to provide a certificate fingerprint. So for that, we go back to the documentation and copy the command here. Once we have it, we head to the command line. Now we place the command here and wait for the response. Now we copy the output that we have here and paste it in the browser. So back in the browser, we paste the value we just copied. Now we can go ahead to create our client ID. Now we copy this and that's our client ID. So we go to the code editor and add that as our Android client ID. Now there is a last property we want to add to the config and that's the scope. That will determine the kind of data that we'll get from the Google sign-in. And the values are profile and email. So we add it to our configuration object. We are good to proceed. So to start with, we import all as Google from Expo Google App Auth. So we'll do it at the top of the component. Now to trigger the login, we we'll use the method google.loginAsync and we'll go ahead to pass the config object to it. And this will return a promise. Let's go ahead to handle the catch. We also want to set the error message, so let's use handle message. Now the result that we get from the promise contains a type and also a user. The type gives us a summary of whatever has happened, it's either a cancel or a success. The success is when the user has been able to log in successfully. Also the user provides us with an object which contains all the details about the user. So we can destructure that from the result. So if the type is success, we want to go ahead and navigate to our home page. I also want to display an error message to the user, saying that the Google sign-in was cancelled. So before we move to the welcome page, we can display a message briefly, and we can use set timeout to delay the movement slightly. So we are moving to the welcome page. 
Once again, we want to pass the data to the welcome page. But with Google sign in, we get more than just the username and email. We get all these details that we are seeing here, including a link to the user's photo. So what we can do here is that if the user signed in using Google sign in, we want to change the avatar on the welcome page and replace it with the user's photo. So for now, let's just structure the values that we need from our user. And for the timeout, we will pass a delay of 1 second. Now just like we did for the login button, when we click on the sign in, we want an activity indicator to be showing. So let's go ahead to create a state variable to monitor the state of the Google sign in. Or oh, at the top here, I forgot to bring us. We call this variable. Google submitting. And the initial value will be set to false. Now let's go to the bottom of the page. So if Google submitting is false, we will return our regular button. Otherwise, we will return the button with the activity indicator. Let's copy the activity indicator here. Now, once we have done that, we need to toggle the value of the Google submitting. So we'll do that in the handle Google sign in. So once the button is pressed and we enter this function, we want to set Google submitting to true. Once we are done with the then block, we want to set Google submitting to false. And also, once we are done with the catch block, we want to set submitting to false. So now we need to pass this function to the unpressed property of the button. So we change the unpressed to handle Google signing. Now let's save and connect our application to the Metro server. As we can see, our changes are now reflecting. Now clicking on the Google sign in button, we see that the activity indicator is showing and you are redirected to a page where you can sign in with Google. So the sign in with Google doesn't work very well with my emulator, so I will demonstrate it to you using an actual device. But first, let's make some few changes to the welcome.js file. So as we said, Google provides you a link to a photo. So we want to check whether the link to the photo exists. If it exists, we will use that instead of the flower that we have on our welcome page. So in addition to the name and email, I will take in the photo URL. Now I will create a variable to store the link to the avatar that we will use. Now since the link that will be provided by Google will be an external link, we need to pass it as a value to the URI key in an object. So we replace the source here with avatar image. This link should be image 1 instead. So this should work fine. Now let's move to the demonstration on the actual device. So 
on opening the app on an actual device, I noticed that there is another background behind our app. And that is due to the keyboard avoiding wrapper that we created. So quickly, let's change the background of the keyboard avoiding wrapper. We will find it in the components directory. To get the color that we want, let's import the colors from the components. Apply the background color to the keyboard avoiding view. Now running it again, we see that it's looking better. Now let's try out the signing with Google. Now we see that the Google signing was successful and the details on the welcome page too have been updated to match the details that we got from the Google signing.